You might be under the impression that to the average European of classical history, the far east of Asia might as well have been on another planet, as it wasn't until the days of Marco Polo or the Mongols did any Westerners actually make contact with East Asians, but this is actually incredibly far from the truth. There has actually been contact between East Asia and Europe for many thousands of years now, maybe not directly, but the Uralic peoples or Euralians are proof of this. As lying in northern Eurasia, halfway between Europe and East Asia, they are essentially an ancient mixture of both peoples, with the original proto uralic people originating from eastern Siberia, north of China, and gradually migrating west, where they intermixed with ancient North Eurasians and other western Eurasians. The reason that Europe and East Asia typically didn't have much contact across this vast stretch of land is due to a couple reasons, namely climate and geography with the southern route through Central Asia to China being quite rugged and mountainous before leveling off into one of the world's largest deserts, while the northern route through Siberia is quite inhospitable for obvious reasons, but every now and then, a group of curious or desperate nomads would make the trek through this passage across the supercontinent of Eurasia. The Huns are an example of such a people, becoming one of the most infamous tribes in all of Western history in just a few short years, but they weren't the only ones, as a few other invading nomads that have seemingly been lost to history have had quite a huge impact on European history and elsewhere. You see, before the arrival of the Huns or even the rise of the Romans, the area in between Europe, the Middle East, India, China, and Siberia, known as Central Asia, was conquered and settled by Indo-European migrants from the Pontic Caspian Steppe, which for a time essentially made it an extension of Europe, demographically speaking, or perhaps somewhere between Europe and the Middle East. Over time, many invading tribes from the Far East intermixed with some of these Central Asians, such as the Scythians, creating new people groups and nations even before the Huns. Since at least 2,000 years in the past, Turkic peoples from Eastern Siberia had been making conquests into Central Asia, and even as far as the fringes of Europe, where they clashed not only with the Scythians, but also early Slavic and Germanic peoples. And keep in mind, even the Chinese were aware of these nomadic tribes and thought of them as a similar nuisance, since they had been invading China for hundreds of years as well. It actually wasn't until the 4th century AD that the Huns emerged at the borders of Europe, having carved their way through North and Central Asia, but where did they come from exactly? Due to the fact that almost no written records of the Hunnic language exist, this question is extremely difficult to answer, but judging by place names and personal names seen in the Hun army, it would appear that the Hun forces were actually a hodgepodge of many different cultures, including Scythian, Turkic, Slavic, and Germanic, with much of their army likely being local in origin rather than having migrated from their original home in Siberia. Similar to the Mongols, their initial invading force was most likely relatively small, perhaps a few tens of thousands, but through conquest and conscription, their army would have grown exponentially in a snowball effect due to superior tactic and preparedness. The Huns were definitely a distinct ethnic group though, most likely originating from eastern Siberia, nearby to the homeland of the Mongols, Turks, and Euralians, with it being debated which larger ethnic affiliation they belonged to, with many historians and linguists coming to the conclusion that they were likely Altaic in origin, related to the Mongols, Turks, and Tungusic peoples of Siberia. And it's unknown if the Huns were actually the ones to invade China, as their links to the Xiongnu tribal confederacy that frequently raided northern China has so far been unsubstantiated, and the Huns of modern western depictions were most likely a stand-in for Mongols, Turks, or any other number of other peoples in the region, but since they're still around while the Huns have bit the dust, it probably seemed like the safer choice, not to mention western audiences could relate to the existential threat and destruction wrought by the Huns. The original appearance of the Huns probably lined up well with others from Northeast Asia such as the Mongols, although over time the Hunnic population would have become extensively mixed during their trek westwards, and by the time they reached Europe they were likely quite mixed, similar to Turkic tribes in the area, and while the ranks of the Huns most likely would have consisted of those of European origins such as the Goths, Alans, or Slavs, the ruling elite would have been Hunnic in origin, or Eurasian or East Asian in appearance, according to Roman accounts. In only a century, the Huns marched from their homeland in the Far East to Central Asia, quickly passing the Ural Mountains, leaving a path of devastation in their wake, 
And by the early 5th century, the Huns had arrived in Europe on the border of the Roman Empire, having conquered every people in their path. It is quite difficult, however, to refer to the Huns as an empire, since they didn't exactly govern over the territory that they conquered, instead being a loose affiliation of tribes who formed shaky alliances based out of convenience and survival, and hence there were no exact borders of the Hunnic-controlled realm, but the Carpathian Basin in Central Europe was under the greatest extent of Hun rule in Europe, extending outwards into Germany, Eastern Europe, and possibly even beyond into North Central Asia. Following the invasion of Europe by the Huns, thousands of refugees fled from their conquest, including the Ostrogoths and Alans, largely settling in the Eastern Roman Empire, with the Alans actually surviving the ages up until the 15th century, when they traded their traditional language of Yasic for Hungarian, and little known fact, the Huns also attempted to cross the Caucasus Mountains into Persia, but were eventually defeated and pushed back north. The Romans didn't exactly have time to prepare for this mass invasion, however, as due to internal political conflict, separatism, and civil war, this provided the perfect opportunity for the Huns to pass the Danube into the Balkans and what was then known as Pannonia, a region mostly located inside what is modern-day Hungary. After a series of devastating raids in the Eastern Roman Empire, the Romans eventually agreed to pay a yearly tribute in gold. However, soon Attila, the leader of the Huns, after murdering his own brother, started an incursion into the Western Roman Empire as well, quickly cutting through Gaul and eventually crossing the Alps into Italy, with the destruction being quite legendary to say the least. In the mid-5th century, just when it seemed as if the end of the Romans was nigh, with the Huns on the brink of sacking Constantinople as well as Rome, Attila unexpectedly died of a hemorrhage, which sent the Hunnic realm into chaos as many of the Germanic tribes under the Huns were emboldened enough to rebel against their rulers, with whatever cobweb structure of governance that was held together almost disappearing overnight. Although his three sons attempted to hold the crumbling kingdom together, the Goths, Scythians, and Romans essentially banded together to stamp out the threat of the Huns for good, slaughtering the remaining Hun army. Although some Hunnic villages managed to survive throughout Central Europe for a few generations, with the longest lasting possibly being in the Caucasus Mountains, where they were eventually absorbed by the Turkic Khazaria Khaganate. The Huns were not the last invading force from Siberia, however, as the Avars, who are sometimes often referred to as Huns in historical sources, also settled in the region of Pannonia, or the Carpathian Basin, establishing a new empire in 567 AD, around a century after the fall of the original Huns, and similarly were mostly composed of a variety of Germanic, Slavic, and other European peoples ruled over by the Avar elite, although eventually the Avar language fell out of use and the empire embraced Christianity. Similarly to Hunnic, the Avar language was never recorded, although it is heavily speculated it was also of Altaic origin, with others that would settle in this region including the Turkic Bulgars and later the Magyars from the Ural region of Siberia, with the Magyars eventually integrating with the local population, eventually becoming the nation of Hungary. Although the Hungarians still refer to themselves as Magyar in their own tongue, the reason they are known as Hungarians in English is because many early scholars largely associated the Hungarians with the Huns, although there was obviously no continuity in the rule of the Huns and the Magyars that followed. The average genetic impact of the original Huns and other Eurasian steppe nomads on the people of Hungary and the surrounding area of Eastern Europe today is without a doubt pretty low with the average individual from this region having around 1-4% to East Asian DNA, with most Eastern Eurasian haplogroups being completely absent from Central Europe, showing a complete absorption into the populace. One exception to this are the Sekles, who show moderate North Eurasian genetic impact in the paternal and maternal haplogroups, possibly as high as 5-7%, to most likely due to their isolation from the rest of the Hungarian population, who would have had higher rates of intermixing with the surrounding Germans and Slavic people. So essentially, the Sekles are a snapshot of what the Hungarian population would have looked like in the past, but honestly, the difference isn't huge. If you remember from my video over the Euralians, Finns, Estonians, and the Sami have some of the largest rates of East Asian DNA in Europe proper, meaning Europe excluding Russia, and do share some genetic affinity with the Hungarian population, although their Asian DNA exclusively derives from Northern Eurasian Uralic speakers. 
In Europe proper, the highest rates of East Asian DNA are still found in the totters of Eastern Europe, with there being small numbers scattered throughout Crimea and the rest of Ukraine, the Dobruja region of Romania, and even as far north as Poland and Lithuania, although these are tied with later Turkic migrations, as the impact the Huns left behind was not so much a genetic footprint, but a cultural and historical one. Traditional Hungarian shamanism is very similar to that found among Turkic and other Siberian peoples today, also known as Tangrism, and is essentially a combination of Turkic and Uralic animistic practices and folktales, and the Huns persisted in the tales and legends of many Germanic, Slavic, and Hungarian peoples throughout the ages. Since then, many nations, especially the Hungarians and Sekles, would claim affiliation with or descent from the Huns, presumably in order to make themselves appear more dominant and intimidating, or in order to revel in the military success and glory of an older people. While conversely, in much of Western Europe and the European diaspora, they have since come to associate the Huns with extreme violence and savagery, hence the Western depiction of the Huns in Mulan, or evidence by reference to the Germans as the Hun menace in Allied propaganda during World War I and II. Either way, the legacy of the Huns will certainly continue to live on throughout all of Europe and the world for their impressive, even if extraordinarily cruel and fearsome feats all those centuries ago. So go ahead and let me know your thoughts on the Huns and their legacy. And for today's poll, tell me which other nomadic Eurasian people you'd like to learn more about. As always, this has been Mason. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you next time.